This is the Silverfast scanning software version 8.8. .8. Since I bought my Epson V600 scanner, I've just been using the Epson software that came bundled with the scanner. It's quite good, but I've, I've read very good reports about third-party software, and I read a very good report about this particular software last week. So I downloaded it, and I've been evaluating it for about a week. It's quite well featured with lots of options, which is good, but on the flip side, if you're a new user, having so many options can be a bit daunting and confusing. So what Silverfast give you is what they call a workflow pilot. And whereas in the, in the expert mode, you need to know all of these settings before you scan, with the workflow pilot, it just takes you through each stage step by step and makes the process a lot easier. So all you need to do is just select the source. You've got print, photo, negative and slide. Prints and photos are reflective. Negatives and slides are transparencies. Negative is negative, obviously, and slide is positive. And then choose a task. And the, the most basic one is archive, so we'll just leave it at archive. That's all you need to do, and then press start. And what it will do now is a, a pre-scan. And the images you can see at the moment are from the last pre-scan. And you can't actually delete them. The, the, soft, the software retains those. And the only way you can get rid of them is to do a new pre-scan, and the new pre-scan overwrites the old pre-scan. And the other problem with this workflow pilot is that you can just capture one frame, which is not good if you're archiving thousands of old negatives, because what you want, here, here you can see I've got eight frames, and what you want are, are eight files. And with this workflow pilot, you can only get one file. So I'm just going to put the red border around one frame. And you get a resolution option. You can choose from 800, 1600, or 3200 PPI. And this is the first part of the color, color correction here. And the software has got profiles for film from different manufacturers. So this was Kodak Gold. And by choosing those options, it should make the colors look a bit better. And if you can't remember which film you're using, it's actually written on your negatives. And there's a, um, you can change the exposure if you want to, make it darker or, or lighter. And this, there's an, another, another adjustment, which is tolerance for orange mask detection. I'm not even sure what that is. I, I don't normally use that. So once that's all set, continue. And then you can specify a name. I'll just call it flag and you can specify the extension so you've got TIFF uh, which is lossless PSD which is the, uh, the Photoshop format JPEG which is a uh, compressed or PDF if you choose JPEG you can then select um, a compression option a compression level to make the the file smaller or bigger and you can specify where you want to put the file. And I've got a folder called Silverfast already set up. So once that's all done, just press continue again. And it will do the scan. I'm not sure if you can hear the, the scanner whirring in the background. Okay, so that's now all done. So if we go into the the folder, we should see flag. This is the image I've just scanned in. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you some more advanced options using the scanning software. So what if you want to do some more editing on your image, but you still want to use the workflow pilot? Go to Workflow Pilot, and instead of choosing Archive, choose Edit and Edit Extensive. 
and you'll see you get some more stages up here. So as it steps through, you'll have more things to adjust. Start, it will do another, another pre-scan. You tend to spend quite a lot of time waiting around while it pre-scans. Bear with me, scanner's just started up. Here we go, we've got the progress bar. Okay, so once again, we'll frame that flag. Okay, I'm going to choose 1.5 mega, megapixels and do my negative profile again, Kodak Gold 200. I'm not, I'm not going to touch the exposure on Torrance. Let's move forward. And here it says automatic image optimization has been applied. If we open up these dialogues, this, this one's just like the levels in Photoshop. And this one's just like the curves in Photoshop. And as we go forward, you'll get an opportunity to adjust these. So this is just shadows, highlights, and midtones. So it's exactly the same as levels in Photoshop. I'm not, I'm not going to adjust any of these. And then curves. If you want to, you can, you can adjust the curve. Okay, forward again. This feature is, is really nice. If you, if you look at the image of the flag, you can see that the sky isn't a particularly nice colour. It's bluish, but it's got quite a lot of grey in it. So what I can do, I can just move this little black dot on the colour wheel, move it to the blue side, and I can make the sky look a much more attractive colour. That's, this is, that's quite a nice feature on this software. I, I like that one. Continue again. And here, selective colour correction. So say, for example, you thought that the red on the flag was a bit weak. What you can do is just make the red stronger. And you, you can do that for any colour. Continue again. This is auto sharpness. We, we, with, most of it, with digital images, we always apply some sharpening. And this is no exception. So I'll just leave it on auto sharpness and continue. Okay, now this this one is the scratch and dust uh, detection and removal. So it tells me to click on the one-to-one -one button and then put the cursor over the image. It makes the image bigger. It's doing it's doing another pre-scan, so there's more more waiting around. Okay, scanner's just started up, doing the pre-scan. And what I found with my old negatives, there's lots and lots of dust and scratches. I'm not sure how this is going to come out on the, on the video, but you should be able to see quite a lot of white specks and scratches around here. Okay, so when it... When the scanner scans normally, it, sc it scans red, blue, and green channels. And when it's doing this, it does an infrared scan as well. And the infrared scan detects all the, the, the dust and scratches. So it's doing that now. And when it's done it, it should, it should remove a lot of these little white flecks. Scanning IR. So I'm not sure how this is going to turn out in the video. It's very, as I'm watching now, it's all very clear. Nearly finished. Okay, now I've, all those little flakes have just disappeared. So if I choose original, they'll all come back again. You should be able to see them. And if I choose mark, all these little red dots is where the infrared scanner has found defects. And I can put it back on a correct or automatic and they'll disappear again. Now, 
there, I'm looking closely. There, most of them are gone, but there are still a few scratches. There's, there's a fairly big one here. So if I go forward, this is the smart removal of defects. And what I'm going to do now, rather than look at the whole image, I'm going to apply a mask just around, just around this scratch. And I'll, call, I'll just call that scratch. And I'm going to choose correct. And then I'm just going to wind up, or well, I'm going to play around with these detection and tile size sliders. And I'm going to try and get rid of that scratch. So I'll, I'll increase detection. No, it still hasn't gone. Okay, you should have seen now, inside that yellow loop, the scratch that was there just now has now gone. So that's another quite nice feature about this software. Continue again. Oh, so, so okay, so just to recap so far, we've corrected color cast, we've played around with colors, we've removed uh, scratches and dust, and we've done the sharpening. So let's go forward again. And we're ready to file. So this, this is the same as before. So we can call it something. I'm going to call this one flag, flag2. I'm going to save it as a TIFF file again. And I'm going to put it in the same directory as before. In the silver fast one. And now I'm going to save. Okay, it tells me it's finished. Now let's look in our directory. And this one here, flag, is the one we did with the very basic scan using archive. Let's open that and make it look a bit bigger. And you can see that sky isn't a great color. So close that one. And flag two is the one we've just done with the more extensive editing. And you can see here, the sky is a much nicer color. The reds look better. All the dust and scratches have gone and it looks sharper. So we've, we've done a, a much better job. If you were wondering about file sizes, I did a few tests scanning at different resolutions and these were the results I got. When you scan 35mm negatives, the software decides where to frame each image and each one is slightly different. So do bear in mind these results are only very approximate. Once you've become familiar with Silverfast, it's better and quicker to use this expert mode. The workflow pilot mode is, is really designed for beginners. You get basically all the same options, but whereas the workflow pilot will just take you through step by step telling you what to do, with the expert mode you need to work out what to do yourself and you need to know where to go. But it's not too difficult. You can easily get the hang of it within a few hours of playing around. I'm not going to go through it all because it's going to be too time consuming. But basically, ISRD and SRDX are your um, scratch and dust removal. Gain is your grain and noise elimination. USM is your unsharp mask and you can rotate images and you can do global color correction and all the other things that you saw with the workflow pilot. What's important about this expert mode is that if you're scanning in um, thousands of negatives using strips of film, you need to use this one to get one file per frame. As you can see at the moment, we've got one frame which covers two strips of film. But what we, what we really want are frames around each frame of film. So we're going to frame, find frame, and then film strip 35 millimeter holder. And it searches. And what it's done, it's put frames around these, these eight images here. So they are numbered, but it's very difficult to see numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just one has a red frame around it. So if you want to work with one frame, just click and it moves the red frame. 
If you want to scan one frame, just highlight the frame you want to scan and then click scan. However, if you hold the mouse button down on scan, you'll then see an option for batch scan. And then you can choose a folder. I'll go, I'm going to go back and choose that same folder I, I chose earlier, Silverfast. Now what it's doing, it will scan and create eight separate files for those eight images. And there's, there's no way that I've so far worked out you can do that with the workflow pilot. I'm not going to do any more because it will be a very long and tedious video, but that should have given you a general overview of what the software can do. So how does it compare to the Epson software? And I read lots of glowing reviews of third-party scanning software, and the Epson software gets quite a lot of criticism. But I don't actually think it's that bad. And when I do scan with the Epson software, I don't regard that as being the final stage. I, I take the files and then put them through Photoshop to finish them off. But if you're not very good with Photoshop, this might be a better option, because within the Silverfast software, you can do a lot more and by the time your, your file has come out, they should be usable without needing to put them through Photoshop. The next two points concern reliability and value for money. And with reliability, I've been using it for about a week, and on about three or four occasions, it's just crashed for no reason. I don't know what I did to make it crash, but it doesn't seem 100% uh, stable, and the Epson software has never done that. Regarding value for money, um, my original plan was to download a trial version, try it out, and then if it was any good, buy it. But when I went to the website, it was offered free. I just downloaded the software, um, registered, and they sent me a license key. So I have a fully licensed version, and it didn't cost me a penny. So value for money, it's excellent. I hope that overview has been useful. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And if it was useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. And hopefully there'll be more videos soon. Thanks for watching.